know what you said, but I guess I deserved it. Dirtinger. Oh, excuse, please. You understand Chinese? <laughs> Oaf is a for dumb chicken, not for pretty lady. Hop Sing, I'm Jennifer. Jennifer Collier. Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, good to see you. Is Mr. Cartwright at home? Mr. Cartwright, everybody gone. They'll be back for supper. Oh, that's just as well. I'd like to freshen up a bit anyway. Freshen up? Simon uh, Sin. Oh, Simon <laughs> Sin. <laughs> Dai Hung Leila, I'm going Ho, ho, ho. My trunk is still at the depot. We'll have to send for it. Ah, oh, nice to have pretty visitor oh. here again. Oh, it's nice to be here. Follow me, please. Oh. Uh, Jennifer. <laughs> Welcome, Missy Jennifer. Come in. Oh, it's just the way I've always remembered it. Nothing changed. Missy Jennifer, how is your father, Mr. Harry? Oh, he's fine, thank you. Mr. Cartwright looked forward to see him, but he not tell Hop Singh to expect such pretty bonus. I fix you number one guest room. Hop Singh? Yes, Missy. These were Ben's wives, weren't they? Yes. This a mama of Adam, mother of horse, and mama of little Joe. Very pretty, no? Oh, yes. I fix you room chop chop so you can sight me in seat. <laughs> That's stock work. You better put that supper on the back of the stove. Maybe you like Hopsy put her on back of the stove. Who? What? Pretty her. Missy Collier. Missy Collier? Yes. Wait, you better, ya! Put that Missy out! Jennifer? Hello, Ben. My goodness! <laughs> oh, how wonderful to see you. Jennifer. Oh, why didn't you let us know you were coming? I didn't want to cause any trouble. Don't worry, Hop Singh took care of me quite well. Oh, I'm sure he did. He must have been happy to see you. <laughs> well, here you are, all grown up. An engineer. Harry told me you were back east at an engineering seminar. That was six months ago. And I'm so anxious to see Harry's new mining pump. Do you realize, Jennifer, if it works, how much property can be saved, how many lives? It'll work. I came out ahead to get things ready. Pop will be here day after tomorrow. Good, good. Oh, you've got to come outside with me. Hoss and little Joe are just putting up the horses. I want to see the look on their faces when they see little Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs>
Ben, you'd never know the problems I had getting here. Would you sit up, please, Mr. Gallagher? I can't understand why Jennifer didn't tell you what happened. Well, all she said was that she was getting here a few days early so she could help you. Help me? She left an angry groom and over 300 guests waiting at the church. You saying that Jennifer was going to get married? Sunday last, to Tuttle Ames. Tuttle Ames? You mean that, that banker, that young tycoon I've been hearing about? You should have seen him. His face was as red as a lobster. Oh, when that Jenny makes her mind up, she's sure her mother's daughter. <laughs> ben, Mr. Collier, Dr. Crump wrote me to give you a thorough examination. Now, I can't do it if you're going to keep chattering like a magpie. <clears throat> Sorry, Doctor. Dr. Crump says I'm all right. Heart's as strong as an ox. Ah, as long as that ox gets plenty of rest and restricts his exercise in his high altitude. Now, do you have plenty of those powders that your doctor prescribed? Yeah. All right, you can get rest. Don't worry, Doctor. I'll make very sure that he takes good care of himself. Thanks, Ben. And watch his diet, will you? No fat foods. Harry, your shirt. Everything here on the list. Take a look over there. Tuttle Ames. How'd it go? The devil knows. She doesn't seem much inclined to go back to San Francisco. What about Tuttle Ames? Didn't say much. But she's only interested in getting the presents back to those that sent them. Oh, she must have said something. Well, the fact is, she did most of the talking. But I've never been able to make much sense out of that girl. On the other hand, she might listen to you. Now, wait a minute, Harry. Jennifer is your daughter. Ben, you've got to do this for me. You're the only one she'll listen to. And I can't get on with the water project till I have this settled. Ben? Sure wish you had three sons instead of one daughter. Come in. Oh, I see Papa sent you to talk some sense to me. Yes, yes, something like that. Poor Papa. He'll just never understand what I did. Well, free marital did it. Common malady for the groom as well as the bride. Is is that how you see me? A nervous young girl? Well, no, no. I... When I told Tuttle I wasn't going to marry him, it was no momentary impulse, Ben. Oh, Jennifer, why did you go through with it right up to the altar? He kept after me and after me. Tuttle is not a man to take no for an answer. Well, it sounds like he'd make a perfect husband. Not for me. When we got to the church, I just couldn't go through with it. I suppose you're going to tell me that you know exactly the kind of man you want to marry. Yes. Have you found him? Oh, yes. Does he know? He should. Uh, Paul, there's a fellow downstairs see. Oh, excuse me. Ben Cartwright. Yes. Sam Morris is the name. What's this? On behalf of my client, Tuttle Ames, I hereby inform you you're to appear at the Virginia City Civil Court two weeks hence. What's that he said? Two weeks hence, where you'll defend yourself against the charge herein. What charge? It's on the paper. Take a look and see. Good day, sir. I 
I'm sorry, Ben. The alienation of the affection of one Jennifer Leslie Collier. You knew about this? But I should have. Why? Because you were the one I told him I was going to marry. Jennifer's trousseau, wedding gifts, dust for the bridesmaid. I guess that does it. You know, this would be a lot simpler if you just got Jennifer to go up to San Francisco. I told you the test is here. If Mohammed won't come to the mountain, then... He... Yes? Oh, Mr. Coy. Hello, Bert. Brother Collier. This is Ben Cartwright. Bert Taylor there is my best man. You see, I intend to marry Jennifer before I leave this town. Well, surely that would be Jennifer's decision. But if you are that confident, what's the point of the suit? I don't wish to discuss it. It seemed to me that you'd want to keep the woman you intend marrying out of a messy situation. That's my concern. I'm not interested in your opinion. You blast it, boy. Ben's trying to be reasonable. Father Collier, my fight isn't with you. Mr. Cartwright, I'll see you in court. Tuttle, Ben here is an old friend of mine. It's all right, Harry. <laughs> Jim Wilson's my attorney. He'll act for me. I guess you'll be wearing your wedding suit real soon. I think you're right, Bert. Come in. Oh. oh, Jenny. Before you come downstairs, there's something I want you to know. What's the matter? Tuttle Ames is in Virginia City. He means to cause Ben trouble, and he's not bluffing. Tuttle Ames never saw the day he could frighten Ben Cartwright. Oh, frighten Ben, he can't. But he won't stop trying until he's hurt Ben. He's got power and he's got money. And he might just do it. Papa, do you want me to marry Tuttle? I want what will make you happy. But you know how I feel about Ben. I want you to be fair with him. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. <laughs> Except you have the most roundabout way of giving a daughter your blessing. <laughs> hey, that sure is a pretty dress you got, huh? Thank you. Oh, Missy Jennifer. Hop Sing have a special treat. Big stock, just like you say. Plenty butter, plenty honey, A number one good. Oh, thank you, Hop Sing. Where's Mr. Cartwright? Oh, he outside in storage room. Something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. You know, I'm saying if you play your cards right, uh, Miss Jennifer might put in a good word for you. Go, 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 Talk to your father. Yes. You heard about Tuttle then? Yes. 
Should that make any difference? Well, it will if you if you tell him the truth. And that is? Well, that you weren't running after me, you were running away from him. Oh. And that's the truth? Well, Jennifer, I, I don't pretend to know what, what's going on in your mind, but uh, well, I can understand you saying certain things that you don't necessarily believe just to get out of a situation. Then uh, maybe you'll understand the memory of a tall stranger who brought a young girl her first flowers, who showed her San Francisco, a city she lived in but really never known. Jennifer, you were... You were 12 years old at the time you were a child. Yes. But I knew I would marry a man like you one day. Cuddle. It was a mistake. It made me know that I don't want a man like you. Hitched up the team, I ought to be the so one. So you to hitched take, up sir. the team. I got the wagon ready. It huh? takes a lot longer to hitch up a team. Than I had to, to get clean a wagon. the whole thing up. Oh, hey, it took me two hours. I remember the most important thing. I had Hopsane fix up a little lunch for us. Well, it's because that's all you think about is eating. Huh? That's right. right. Of course, why not? Let's look at right now. All right. Howdy, right. ma'am. Right. Good morning. How are you? Here we go. I hitched up the team. Thank you. I got the wagon lunch. ready. Well, it was nice. Uh, well, I, I hitched up the team. Got it. Got it ready. I think that's very considerate of you. All of you. Thank you very much. See you later. Yeah. Bye. This has to be the most wonderful country in the world. Well, it is. At least I think it is. Because you don't remember. You were here once, oh, years ago. Yeah? Matter of fact, I think it was right under that tree. I came looking for you because you'd, uh, you'd gone out by yourself, and I found you right under that tree chasing a whole bunch of squirrels. I remember. <laughs> and I looked up, and there you were, sitting straight in the saddle, tall and handsome. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> and smiling, always smiling. As if you were really pleased to see me. Well, I was. Oh, I feel so lightheaded today. <laughs> well, it could be the altitude. Could be the company. <laughs> it seems I remember the feeling one other time. Trip to Oceanside Park. Well. Yeah, of course, that was the time I tried to teach you how to sail and we dumped in the water. <laughs> oh, it was fun. <laughs>
I suppose it's past my bedtime. Good night, Papa. <laughs> Besides, tomorrow's a big day. And Jenny's giving me that look. Her mother used to stable a team of mules with it, kind of an evil eye. You better look out for it, Ben. Very funny. <laughs> and it's getting late. It's time you were in bed. <laughs> See what I mean? And she's right. <laughs> I better get my rest. Tomorrow's a big day. And don't forget, Good Ben. Good night, Papa. Good night, Ben. Good night, Harry. Night, Cap. That would be very nice. Thank you. Now, you and I must have a little talk. You make it sound so serious. Sit down, young lady. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jennifer, you're young, you're vital, you're beautiful. And, uh, yes, I'm, I'm flattered that you might want to marry me. That's the secret of my success, flattery. Jennifer, have you thought this through? A dozen times. Why? Why? Well, if only because of the, the years between us. You're young enough to marry one of my sons. Yes, I am. But I don't want to marry one of your sons. I want to marry you. Me? Or that other man? The one who taught you to ride? Try to teach you how to sail in the bay at San Francisco and dumped you in the water when you were a child. The man you are now. You don't know the man I am now. Oh, Ben. I do. No. Ben. I'm not that young. It's true, I had a dream, a, a memory, if you prefer, but I've tested that memory. I've seen you, I've been with you, I've talked to you. I like... I love what I've seen. And I like what I see. And I, I believe that you, you feel what you're saying now. But in five years... If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't be here. If I wasn't sure that in five years I'd feel the same way, that I could be a wife to you, a, a help to you, a friend to your sons. Let's talk about that. My sons. Ben, be honest with me. Have you changed your mind? Jennifer, I haven't made up my mind. There are so many problems to discuss. Jennifer, this is a masculine household. I know that. Hoss and little Joe won't show any resentment, but there may be resentment, and you may feel it. I'm not worried. Well, there are other problems. You, you'll be away from your father, from your friends. Ben, there are problems in every marriage, problems that people can and do solve. But this is not every marriage. You're trying to talk me out of it. Now, Jennifer... It's time we both got some rest. Tomorrow's an important day. Well, every day is an important day, Jennifer. Oh, yes, Ben. Yes.
sit down for a couple of minutes, will you? I've got to talk to you about something. Important? Well. Shoot. I've been, uh, been up most of the night. Kind of what I've been thinking about. Well, I've been, uh, I've, I've had to try to come to some kind of a decision. It's been a, well, it's a very difficult decision to have to make, and I, I think perhaps I've, I've reached it, but, uh, I just thought I had to talk to both of you about it. Yeah, well, well, what is it? Since it affects both of you. We've lived here together at the Ponderosa for some time. I hope it won't change anything. Well, the fact of the matter is I... I've asked Jennifer to... Well, the fact of the matter is I've... Uh, I decided to ask Jennifer to marry me. Good. Oh, what was it that you wanted to talk about that was important? <laughs> it's not exactly a surprise, Pa. <laughs> <laughs> How about some breakfast? Right, you know, you <laughs> Oh, no thanks, Hoss. Got to check a few gauges. How's it going? Good. Real good. <laughs> this morning, everything's good. Yeah, wait, hey. wait, wait. Let me give you a hand. Oh. Ah, thank you, gentlemen. Today, I <laughs> feel wonderful. Just wonderful. And to tell you the truth, I think it's more because of you and Jenny rather than the mine. You know, it was a very difficult thing, raising a girl child all alone. For a while there, I had my worries. <laughs> but I got a feeling today her mother would be very, very proud. And with the pump ready to be tested, how could I be a happier man? Tuttle, come here and look. Looks like you were right. Just a matter of time. Good be just like the taking of a general sword. Go out in the hall and greet her. Right. The volume's dropped almost 50%. Doing real good there for a while, wasn't it? Well, the lower the water drops in the shaft, the longer it has to lift. The harder the pump has to work. It simply doesn't have the capacity. We're not even able to keep up with the seepage. Important thing is, it works. But not efficiently, Ben. Not efficiently. No, no. The, the mud's already clogging the valves. It'll take over a month to redesign, at least a month or two to build and test a new one. Well, Harry, you've licked up a problem, so I'm sure you'll find a way of licking this one, too. This way, Miss Conya. Tuttle, I... Yes, Jennifer? Now that I'm here, I... find it difficult to say what I want. You might try apologizing. That's a logical beginning. I suppose I do owe you an apology. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Tuttle. Good. That's done. I must admit there was a time you had me worried with this Cartwright foolishness. If you'd listen to me in San Francisco, there wouldn't be any need for this. Of course, we'll be married here. I've already made inquiry. This suite will do nicely. Bert, I'm sure, can find a handsome lady to act as your maid or a matron of honor. What are you talking about? Our wedding. And this time, there'll be no running off. You made a fool of me once. It's not going to happen again. I am not going to marry you, Tuttle. Surely you don't expect me to give up that easily. 
After all, you made me a laughing stock in San Francisco. You owe me, Jennifer. I told you in plenty of time. You could have called off that wedding. Such consideration. It wouldn't have worked anyway. You know that. And Cartwright? Ben Cartwright is a wonderful man. He's kind and gentle. And he cares about people, which is something you'd never understand. You would marry me, this builder of empires. Well, let me tell you something. It's a backwoods empire. Your Mr. Cartwright is not so invulnerable as you might think. What do you mean? Sit down, my dear. Now it's your turn to listen to me. Lumber, for example. A third of Mr. Cartwright's income is derived from lumber. I can go into the lumber business, acquire stumpage, build mills, and sell lumber for far less than Mr. Cartwright. 30 or 50 percent less. You deliberately lose money to hurt him. It will be my pleasure. And I'll get the money back after he goes broke and I raise the prices. Cattle? He needs cars at the railheads to ship his cattle to market. I own railroad stock. He'll have trouble getting cars. Lots of trouble. Always the perfect gentleman. Horses. I can bring in horses from California. And corner the market. That's right. Ah, you're getting the idea. I may not sink Cartwright, but I'll hurt him badly. In two years, he'll be selling the Ponderosa piecemeal to pay his debts and stay afloat. And if you're successful, what kind of a marriage do you think it will be? A splendid one. You'll understand who's running things. That's the foundation of all good marriages. You'll see it my way, Jennifer. There are no alternatives. There must be a hundred or so of these old flooded mines around. This thing works good. Be worth a fortune, do you? Now, hold on, Hoss, hold on. Each mine presents a different problem. We'll have to check this one out first before we start talking about the... Uh... I'll be all right. Those powders work faster and better than dynamite. <laughs> Makes a nervous ticker like mine sing like a bird. <laughs> I bet it does. Now, up. Come on. Though the doc says it'll give a good, what, a bad case of the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> good. Now, let's get you back, huh? Easy. All right. All right. Let's be careful. reason for me to be flat on my back when I still have work to do. After all, I don't have a broken leg. When did you get your diploma? I got a degree in engineering. I'm and... not talking about engineering. I mean your medical diploma. Medical diploma? I don't have a medical. That's what I thought. Then I suggest you don't try to tell the doctor what's good for the patient. You see that he stays in bed for at least 24 hours. We will, doctor. Harry, we'll look after the pump and keep an eye on that water level for you. There'll be two of you down if you don't stop talking about the mine. A shrew, that's what I'm raising, a shrew. My glasses. Where are my glasses? <laughs> There's nothing worse than a know-it-all woman.
Jennifer. Yes, Ben. <laughs> you know, with, with everything happening so quickly, I, uh, I'm afraid I overlooked one important formality. It's, it's lovely. But, uh... Jennifer? What is it? Don't ask me. Not now. Something wrong. What is it? Ben, I'm not going to marry you. I wanted to tell you sooner, but with Papa ill... It... You've changed your mind again. You're going to marry Tuttle Baines? Yes. He offered to take me back in spite of the hurt I caused him. I'll be moving into town tomorrow morning. And that's all there is to it. Excuse me, I have to pack. could be just a little soft. <laughs> now, the bride and her father will enter from this corridor. Everything is going very smoothly, just as expected. Good. The guests are arriving. I think you'd better be downstairs to meet them. I was just going. I'll greet them in the corridor. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's so nice to see you. Second floor, first door on your right. Oh, Cartwright. Yes? I expect you know the way. Oh, yes. How are you? Nice to see you. So glad that you could come. Uh, right in here. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Ames. Mr. Collier told me that he had invited you. Of course, you're welcome. Thank you. I wanted you to know that I have dropped the legal action against you. That's very considerate, Mr. Ames. Of course, it would be rather pointless now anyway, wouldn't it? Yes. And Jennifer has assured me that there was never really anything between you. Then you won't mind if I speak to her? Not at all, but make it brief. The ceremony is due to begin in just a few minutes. Well, this won't take long. Uh, where's her room? Oh, I, just down the hall. Thank you. Come in. Oh, Ben, I'm glad you came. I, uh, I didn't want to wait till after the ceremony. I was afraid I, I might miss you. Um, this is, uh, Something I wanted you to have. Oh, Ben, it's lovely. It's been in the family for a long time. Well, I guess I, I'd best be getting along, but I did want you to have that. Ben, would you put it on me? Then 
you forgive me? Of course I forgive you. gathered here to join this couple in holy matrimony, the most binding of all contracts here upon earth. For that reason, it is to be taken as seriously by those in attendance as it is by the pair who take these vows. Therefore, I ask now, is there any man here who can give just cause this couple should not be joined together? Do you, Tuttle, take Jennifer to love and protect, to honor and cherish, to obey all? <laughs> Miss Carlin. Yeah. Jennifer, what's the matter? I'm a doctor. Pulse is racing a mile a minute. We'd better take her up to her room. Easy now. Right. What's wrong with her, Doctor? She's a very sick girl just now, but she's going to be all right. I thought at first she had a heart problem. Then I found this was the cause. It's one of my powders. Mm -hmm. And naturally, it speeded up her heartbeat. Her pulse is still very fast, and she has a thunderous headache. But in a few days, she'll be back to normal. Thank you, Doctor. So, Trudgel! You don't want to marry me? You're not going to marry Ben Cartwright either, because if you try, I will destroy him absolutely. You've got my solemn word on that. I'm sorry. Oh, Jennifer. You'll be up and around in no time. It's going to be a long time, I'm afraid. Oh, no. No. It may seem that way now, but it, it won't be. Why, we'll get you down to the proper sea level, and I'll come to see you in San Francisco. I'd like that. But I... I think a, a different climate would be best place that's warm and, and dry. All right. Yes. So you do that. That's for sure. Tuttle couldn't even wait for the stage. Yeah. That doesn't tell us how Jenny is, though, does it? Let's go on over and find out, huh? We heard about it over at the restaurant. How's Jenny? Uh, she'll, uh... She'll be fine in time. I'm sure she will be. Well, meanwhile, we've got a, uh, We've got a ranch to run. I suggest we get back to it. 